For the next 12 weeks, I'm embarking on a quest that many have dreamed of, yet few have achieved. The cut to 10% body fat. A journey not just for the elite, but for any of us who dared to dream of sculpting our bodies into something more. It's that elusive number, that symbol of ultimate dedication, where abs aren't just made, but revealed as trophies of our hard work. You know it, I know it. Every guy out there wants to look in the mirror and see that definition. Those lines that separate the ordinary from the extraordinary. It's not just vanity, it's the ultimate badge of honor. Proof that we've mastered discipline, that we've pushed beyond what we thought was possible. Let's get real for a moment. This pursuit, it's more than skin deep. It's about carving out an unfair advantage in a world where first impressions can make or break us. Looking good isn't just about catching reflections we like. It's about walking into a room and owning it. It's about confidence, about the silent nods of respect we earn without saying a word. Yes, every guy wants this. We chased after it in gyms and kitchens and the choices we make every single day. But here's the truth. It's not just about wanting, it's about doing and making those tough choices about living a life that others might not understand, all for the moments others might not ever see. This is our battleground. The cut to 10% body fat isn't just a title. It's the narrative, our fight against every excuse, every limitation we've ever set for ourselves. We're here to tear down those barriers to show that with every drop of sweat, with every meal we choose, we're inching closer to becoming the men we're meant to be. So as we stand shoulder to shoulder, ready to dive into the trenches of this battle, remember this, we're not just chasing a number, we're chasing a dream. A dream of strength, of resilience, of undeniable presence. And yes, we're chasing those abs because why not? They're the emblem of our hard-earned victories. Together, we're unstoppable. Together, we'll reach that 10%. And along the way, we'll discover that this journey was about so much more than what we saw in the mirror. It was about who we became in the process. The call to arms, or abs in this case, is sounded. The cut to 10% body fat begins now. Are you ready to be more than you've ever been? Let's do this. Let's transform together. Good morning, guys. I am en route to meet up with video team, and uh, we are going to get a body fat DEXA scan because the journey to 10% body fat is starting today. So we got to see where we are. So we are in route to get my DEXA done right now. So I gave you a definition page so you have that for your reference and okay. the body fat percentage chart for the DEXA scan. All right. I have that for your reference as well. Nice. And your total mass here it measured you at 226.1. Okay. That breaks down into your tissue and into your bone. And then your tissue breaks down into fat and lean. Lean is anything that's not fat or bone in the body. And then you have your fat free, which is just your bone and your lean if you were at 0%, which of course you don't want to be, but yeah. lost all your fat today. So your body fat percentage, 14.3, is taken from fat divided by your tissue. Wow. There. Nice. Yep. Hey, guys. All right. So... We just got the DEXA scan done, 14% uh, body fat. My guess was we're going to be closer to like 16%, but 14% is a really good starting spot. means I probably have less to lose than I think. But now that we have the data and the starting point, uh, it's time to get the weekly staples. We're at my favorite grocery store on earth, Trader Joe's. Don't even try to argue with me. There's no better grocery store than Trader Joe's. Uh, so we're going to go pick up my weekly meal plan meals. So for those of you who are cutting or want to get to 10% body fat, one of the number one things I can tell you, one of the number one tips is try to eat a lot of the same things. Doesn't have to be bland, doesn't have to be boring. You'll see the stuff I eat is tasty, it's good, but I don't mix up my meals that much. I get my daily uh, two to three meals that I like to eat in place. I might vary it up a little bit here and there, but most of the time for the next 12 weeks, I'm going to be eating a lot of the same stuff. Uh, the quantities might change as we get closer and closer to the end of 12 weeks, but I'm not having to come up with new meals all the time. It's ground beef, eggs, you'll see some sourdough, some fruit, some Greek yogurt, some potatoes, some rice, and that's pretty much it. 
I'll use things like hot sauce, but I'll show you as we get in there. But keeping your meals very similar is really, really important and will make life so much easier. All right, grocery shopping is complete. Uh, we're still fasted, by the way. I just had a water, a little bit of pre-workout this morning. Um, so I'm still caffeinated enough and uh, we're going to go hit a quick uh, workout and uh, then we'll crush some meals the rest of the day. I'll take you guys along for a couple of them and uh, the cut to 10% has started officially. <laughs> start tracking everything. Got to get back into the zone. So I'm ready to thrive for the next 12 weeks and uh, take you guys along for the journey. guys so first workout of the cut doing a pull workout i typically roll, roll with a push pull legs upper lower split uh spread my volume out over four to five days um the reason why i tack on the lower to the very end is i have legs that just refuse to shrink so if i somehow only can do four workouts in a week I'm not stressed if I only get one lower body day, but pool day has always got a special place in my heart because for many, many, many years, my back was my weakest body part. Um, that mind and muscle connection just wasn't there. So I've spent a lot of time learning how to properly train back. I've learned the exercises that work best for me. For me, it's pretty simple. Tons of pull-ups, lots of, lots of rows. And today we did the incline dumbbell row. Um, shrugs because traps are a big part of the back. Uh, and then, uh, I tore my bicep back in 2019. So biceps always remind me of that injury, right? So I'm always doing things to strengthen my, my biceps ability to rotate, right? Um, that range of motion is pretty much back to normal, but I never want to lose the strength in that tendon. So, um, one thing I can tell you is when you're trying to lose body fat. The first thing I do is I jump into a strength phase, right? So today is all four to eight reps on pretty much everything, tracking my lifts again, tracking how much weight I'm using, uh, and trying to get stronger progressively week after week after week. Not always going to get stronger in everything. Like we're doing Zotman curls here, the incline. Um, and I'm probably not going to get that much stronger on this because it's just a hard exercise, right? So I might just stick with this one for a while and this with, with this weight in the four to eight rep range. And I, I may not progress for a long time. I may never progress. That's okay because it's hard every time. So um, most people jump into high reps when they're trying to get lean. Big mistake. Give your body a reason to hold on to the muscle that you've worked so hard to build or give your body a reason to build more muscle while you're in a fat loss phase. But um, yeah, I'm excited. I'm not excited about the deficit because the hunger is already starting to be there. That just that controlled hunger, that feeling of like, I could definitely eat right now, but that's okay. It's part of the game. It's part of the game, but time to, uh, continue the shred. It's gonna be a fun 12 weeks. This is actually my first real food meal of the day. It's about 2.20 in the afternoon. So we have uh, some chicken, some pulled chicken from Trader Joe's. Uh, it's got some seasoning, so I don't have to worry about seasoning stuff. And for me, it's honestly all about convenience. It's all about what can I put together that's easy, efficient, tastes good enough. Uh, most of my meals are pretty simple. And then I have some cilantro flavored rice. Uh, I always joke around so you don't have to eat chicken, rice, and broccoli to get ripped, and you don't. I just happen to like how this meal tastes. Um, it tastes good to me. Uh, sometimes I'll mix it up. I'll even you know, put in some salsa or I'll put in some hot sauce. But today I'm just eating the rice with the chicken because honestly, I'm not that hungry right now. 
I'm just eating because I know I'll be hungry in a few hours. I got a ton of stuff to do the rest of the day. I got work, basketball practice. I got to take the dogs for a long walk. So I'm going to be busy and tied up. I don't want to be rushing to try to squeeze in a meal. I want to eat what I'm supposed to eat, which is usually between 12 and two o'clock. I'm a little late today and then I'll eat again somewhere between four and six. Then I'll have you know a dinner somewhere between 8.30 and, and nine and that's pretty much it. I might have a snack before bed, but uh, I'll have a full day of eating coming soon as part of this series. Uh, we're going to wrap things up here today. Let me know what questions you have about getting ripped, getting a 10% body fat. If you're an older guy or a guy with kids in a busy career, uh, this is my specialty. So uh, looking forward to this series. The, uh, the cut has begun officially and uh, look forward to checking with you guys week by week over the next 12 weeks. Talk to you in the next video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And uh, leave a question if you have it. Life moves fast. Make it count. Peace.